Hello and welcome to the Roots Mod Spotlight. In this video I want to show you some of the cool stuff you can do in Roots. I'm also going to show you all the mechanics you need to know in order to progress through the mod. So, breaking tall grass, I'm going to get a few different items. And there we go, there's the item I was looking for, which is Wild Root. So it could be planted, and we've also got Aubergine as well, which is added by the mod. Next thing you're going to want to make is a knife. You can make it out of various different materials. Amethyst probably being the best one to use. And we're going to get bark. And we can get bark from all the different trees. If we use the knife on moss stone, it will act as shears. And that's going to give us terra moss. With a combination of all these items, we can make the staff, the pyre, the book, the growth stone, and the fey crafter. We can also make a pestle and mortar with some stone, and a piece of charcoal. Place some flowers into the pestle and mortar. Grind up, we get petals. Then we place the following items into the pestle and mortar. Then we make spell dust for grove supplication. Now to activate the fake crafter, we're going to need to activate the grove stone. An imbuer is made like so. Place the imbuer down. We're going to put our grove supplication spell down there. We're going to take our staff. I'm going to place it on top and it will infuse the spell into the staff. Once that's done, you'll see that we have Grove Supplication on the wand, on the staff. Next, we make a component pouch with some wool and some string. You can also use silk thread, which comes from silkworms from Mystical World. As you can see, the spell needs Terramos and Wild Root. So we place those into our component pouch. Now we can use the growth supplication spell to activate the growth stone which will allow fake crafting to occur. So we can simply access the fake crafter. To activate the fake crafter we simply right click with the knife. And you can see we've got some rune stone. This is used later on. Uses some bark, a silver or gold ingot, wild root, and the wooden uh, weapon or tool, we can make living tools. With a recipe that also in includes wild root and terramos, we can make the pyre. This is very important because what this does is it will create, for the later rituals, it will create the area of effect for the rituals. So place this in the center, the area of effect you want. Runestone can be turned into runestone brick, and we can then turn that into chiseled runestone. We can place the pyre down here, and we need to place a standing stone. It consists of runestone and chiseled runestone. So in this situation, this is the location of these standing stones. So on the pyre, we can place down the leaves, grass, wool, two terramos. This is going to give us cloudberry. So we simply use a flint and steel. And we have cloudberry. Now if we place in dirt, gravel, bone milk, terramos, and wild root. Activate that. We're going to get four elemental soil. Now we need to go to a Y level higher than 90 and drop our elemental soil on the ground. Then we get calyx soil. Now we can plant our cloud berries on the calyx soil. We can now combine the following items. Let's get a spell dust for Sky Sora. Put the Sky Sora down here. Apply it to the wand. The wand can store up to five different spells. We'll make sure our component pouch has got Cloudberry in it. And now we can use the staff. So this effect lets you fly around. And this will be at the cost of your Cloudberries. So you can see we only have one left now. Okay, so here is our setup with our, for our ritual. We're going to do the ritual transmutation. So we've got our runestone brick with a chiseled runestone on top. We've got the pyre in the middle. And we've got a few items around as well. We've got a leaf with a redstone on top. We've got sand with a dead bush on top. We've got a... This has got water underneath this carpet. Uh, we've got trapdoor over a piece of wool and fully grown carrot. Yeah, it's just regular runestone, not runestone brick. Okay, so let's have a look see what happens.
vines, lily pad, cobweb, beetroot, and cocoa beans. We could try putting this pumpkin above the flowing water and it will turn into a melon. If we want to stop the, the pyre burning, we can put it out with some water. Okay, next thing you want to do, and we can ignore this, these standing stones here, you can do this without them. Not all, not all, uh, not all, recipes, in the, not all recipes in the pyre require standing stones and they require them in different configurations, which you'll find in patchouli. So these combination of items will yield an important flower in the mod called Poreskia. You'll notice that the grove stone has grown all these flowers around to make it into a grove. That's why it's called grove supplication. Let's do a few more things now. So we're going to take a couple of Poreskia, some shears, and a couple of runestone. Hit it with the knife. And we've got runic shears. Now many animals can be shorn. We're going to go with a trusty cow. We're going to get fey leather. Now we can put in these items. We've got fey leather, vines, birch bark, amethyst, and the helmet. It works the same for each armor piece, as you might expect. Put that in here. And we can get the sylvan helmet. So what this will do is, for each piece of armor, 2% reduction cost. So up to 8% in your spell usage. So essentially you won't be using as many of these components in your component pouch. There's also a couple more uses for the runic shears. So when we shear carrots, we're going to get aubergine. When we shear beetroot, we're going to get spirit herb. And when we shear wheat, we're going to get wild wheat. At this stage, I should point out there's many other herbs we can get. These are all crafted in, in similar ways. So for instance, I haven't talked about moon glow, uh, the infernal bulb, uh, dugonia, uh, stalicripe, Various other things that all have different effects when we place them into spells. And there's also a few different types of soil as well. So one feature I haven't mentioned though is this. So this is an offering plate, which is crafted with some runestone. We can place this carapace from the mystical world in here. We'll add this and we'll see we get this logo above the ritual. So let's uh, enable the ritual and see what happens. You can see the carapace was eaten and the and we yield the beetle. Now for instance, say I wanted to remove the sky sora from my staff, I would make the runic dust, which I can just mortar and pestle up the rune stone. So I'd simply return to the imbuer, put runic dust in there, there's the sky sora, put it in, it will take it away. So you can see that now I have the growth supplication left, I can't switch to the next slot. Okay, so we're going to try another one now. So we're going to go one, two, three, you and you. You can see this is going to have the wild root symbol. And this is a fully grown wild root crop. Be careful which type of bark you use, by the way. I've had some problems with various types of bark. Let's see what happens now. Keep an eye on this. There we go. So now we've made the wild wood, now we've made the wild wood tree. Okay, we put the uh, planks in here. We're going to be able to get the wildwood armor set. So we'll give that a go. So there's the wildwood chest plate, plus one armor toughness, plus seven armor. So it's ever so slightly weaker than diamond, but it does only require one diamond. Another requirement that sometimes can be used for rituals is to have a fully grown sapling. So for this ritual I'm going to do called Spreading Forest, we do need one fully grown sapling. The wildwood tree is not counted. Okay, let's put a couple of items in here. So we've got a couple of saplings, the wildwood bark, spirit herb, and some terra moss. It's going to give you Spreading Forest. Let's start her up. Take a look at this one. This is, this is a more serious one, you can tell, because the particle effects are more... Um, there's just more of them. And what this will do is it will literally create a forest. And you can see the range is pretty large. And there's a lot of things like this. There's one which does terraforming as well. Turn it into snow biomes. You have snow everywhere. It will spawn uh, snow golems. There are lots of cool things to check out. I may even do a different video. But for this I just want to explore the concepts like I mentioned at the beginning of the video.
one thing you may notice is that they're all oak trees that are spawning and it's because it looks at the biome it will always be the same type of tree that spawns so it'll just be a forest of one type of tree i think we'll upgrade to the apothecary pouch now so this is a, diff a different kind of pouch it does the same thing it's just got a little bit more storage a little bit of a fancy ui as well okay we're going to put a few more spells on here now we're going to put on the petal shell which requires spirit herbs we're going to put on uh, geese which requires baffle caps and time stop which requires a moon glow leaf if you're wondering again very simple recipe most of these things will be created with vanilla materials okay so at the moment we've got petal shell so you'll see there's three petals rotating around um, my figure now watch what happens when we get attacked take no damage so the petals dissipate okay so now I need to recast it otherwise I'll take damage right so I recast you can see I avoid taking damage again. You'll notice now I've got the geese selected, but the petal shells are still there. So you can do a lot of things with like multiple ones and things like that. So now we're going to take a look at geese. So we've got a zombie here. We're going to try and put it... So you can see he's about to attack. And you can see suddenly he gets frozen in place. This lasts for around 20 seconds. still moving around but he doesn't got awareness yet the awareness will come in a moment it's about 20 seconds it's quite a long time actually there you go but we can freeze him back in place the other one this one is very impressive time stop so you can see here we have a selection of slimes all running around they're about to attack and they've stopped it's only in a small range. You can see this pig has also stopped. Another thing I point out, take a look at my inventory. Look how many arrows I've got. The answer is none. So this wildwood bow will be able to shoot an infinite amount of arrows. It will regenerate just like the living tools do. It have to be like that. Oh, that's cool. So if you've got moon glow in your offhand, you can change a wild wood log into a ruined wild wood log. So to conclude, there's lots of cool things you can do in this mod. Lots of spells, lots of rituals, armor. And I haven't shown a lot of these spells and rituals, but there's ones with animals. There's ones that will create a huge area of effect, protecting you from damage um, by the pyre and crop growth. All sorts of cool stuff. So check it out. Thanks for watching.